Gary Bettman hates Canadian NHL teams. Whether it be true or not, it's a sentiment many Canadian hockey fans have and have had for many years. Following the news we got yesterday at the NHL Board of Governors meetings, well, especially Edmonton Oilers fans may be feeling that much more in the upcoming NHL season. Obviously, this season yet to wrap up, we're not even halfway through, but it's already getting to be dire straits for the Edmonton Oilers based on the news we got from Gary Bettman in an interview yesterday. We'll get more to that in a minute, but folks, this is Dolany TV. Good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Discussion on the channel. It is my great pleasure to have you along tonight on a video I feel is a big discussion that no one has had quite yet, and we will, for good reason, discuss it this evening. That said, if you're new to the channel, new here on Dolany TV, take the next five, ten minutes to consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolany TV as we push towards 10,000 subscribers before the end of 2022. And that said, I'll hit this up here so as you get the visual representation of what I'm asking for those of you who would like the visual representation. And folks, throughout the video, if you like something I say or you just like the video premise in general, consider hitting that like button on this video as well. Thank you so much if you have already done that. Now that said, what am I talking about? Well, yesterday Gary Bettman did an interview with the media live from the Board of Governors meeting where obviously the big talk was the sale of the Ottawa Senators. However, every time Gary Bettman meets in these Board of Governor meetings, there's always an update on the NHL salary cap. Now, if you watch Dolany TV on the regular, you would know that I've talked quite heavily about the salary cap potentially going up three to four and a half million dollars this next season. That is, of course, how things have pl kind of planned out for the Oilers. How, oh yeah, you know what? We talk about the cap being an issue. We talk about Jack Campbell's contract being an issue. We talk about several things as Oilers fans being solved by upwards of four and a half million dollars being added to the upper ceiling of the NHL's salary cap. Well, unfortunately, that may not be the case anymore. Gary Bettman in an update yesterday quoted as saying, we'll see if the NHL salary cap goes up further than $1 million. That would push it to 82 and a half, from 82 and a half to 83 and a half million dollar salary cap for the NHL next season. In any of that, do you, my fellow Edmonton Oilers fans, see a problem? Well, simply put, it is going to cause mass chaos for the Edmonton Oilers at current. As it currently stands, this is something that could destroy the Edmonton Oilers' plans moving forward. Here is why. First graphic we'll bring up. You see this graphic here, the roster statistics, the cap hit statistics, and the additional statistics. Column 1, running down the numbers, after all your little middle stuff there, is of course the Edmonton Oilers' situation this season, which is the $82.5 million salary cap with a projected cap hit of $91.9 million. So we're into the LTIR overages, and our current cap space because of those LTIR overages is $1.592 or $592 million. All right? That is, of course, concerning in a situation where the Oilers are at current with this roster, no upgrades to be made in the offseason, currently over $9 million above the upper ceiling. Now you look at this next column over and kind of what ends up happening here for the Edmonton Oilers and how it all works out. The dead cap goes down by about $2.2 million. The salary and bird cap hit goes down by just over, just under $17 million. However, the salary cap only goes up by $1 million, leaving us with a grand total of roughly $11 million in salary cap, with an extra million added on top of this year's cap. That is figuring $83.5 million. Wherein any of that do you see an issue? Well, simply put, 
what do we got going on with the Oilers? Well, this roster needs this, that, and the other thing, whether it be better goaltending, whether it be better defense, whether it be better forwards. We're still having the same old discussion we have every single year. Now, when you say, well, trade Pugliari, trade Barry, trade CeCe, trade Campbell, you can talk about trading the bad contracts. We are not the only one in the NHL, the only team in the NHL whose salary cap is only going up a million dollars. At some point, with the cap going up staley in terms of percentage year to year, is the situation is no one is going to be left being able to take on bad contracts. So at this point, where the Oilers are, it is a breaking point now for the Oilers. It could simply destroy them by only having the million dollars increase because of these following things. We go to the defense, or sorry, the um, LTIR situation and the injured reserve. I forgot how I organized this. Oh, my apologies. But Evander Kane currently on LTIR. He won't be there next year. Oscar Clefbaum currently on LTIR. His contract expires next year. Mike Smith doing that nice old solid and hanging out in Kelowna for the winter, just chilling, having a good time on LTIR, making $2.2 million. Won't be on LTIR next year. Won't be under contract. So, there in that, you lose your $6.3 million buffer that you had to exceed the NHL's salary cap, but you also lose $6.3 million against your cap hit of 83.5. So, that roster space that we're talking about is very much so lacking because you're losing two non-roster players gaining their cap space, but really not gaining it at all. That is therein the problem for the Oilers and how it simply could destroy them is you are not going to be able to replace the cap money lost with cap money that actually makes some difference, right? The upgrades just simply are not going to be there because you move up to this. One guy on injured reserve right now who needs a new contract, Ryan McLeod, right? Even at the start of the year, we talked heavily about moving Warren Fogle, but Ryan McLeod, who's currently on a less than $800,000 salary, needs a new contract next year. And I don't care how well or how poorly he performs the rest of the year, he will not be an $800,000 player next year. Factor in that he will be a million to million and a half minimum, suddenly you're talking about less than $10 million in salary cap to play with, with this roster group right here. Oh, by the way, Stuart Skinner needs a new contract next year. Oh, by the way, Stuart Skinner has been a breakout star in net for the Edmonton Oilers this season so far. How well can the Oilers negotiate that contract and how soon? So, that's fine. Obviously, as an RFA, there's a little bit to contribute there. Ryan Murray is a UFA next year. Doesn't count towards the salary cap next year. Remember, we got $10 million. So budget, two and a half for Stuart Skinner. Well, now from that, what, $9.5 million after signing Ryan McLeod, you're down to $7 million. Budget that you were going to have to pay Evan Bouchard next year. Guaranteed, he's going to be looking for Tyson Berry money on a long-term contract. So on $7 million, you are down to $2.5 million in cap space. Now budget, you've got this excellent young stud you picked up from the St. Louis Blues in Clean Costin for a defenseman that wasn't going to make your team. Problem is, Clean Costin makes this Edmonton Oilers team better. Clean Costin is the kind of player you want on your team. He's an RFA next year. Well, simply put, with a $1 million increase to the salary cap, is he one of the victims you do not re-sign? Because simply put, you are not going to get him for $750,000 again next year. It's another one of those minimum million-dollar contracts. After signing Evan Bouchard, Stuart Skinner, and Ryan McLeod, and also losing your seventh defenseman in Ryan Murray, you've got only $2.5 million in salary cap to play with. Sure, sign clean cost in to a $1 million deal. That's just therein to have an operating roster at the NHL level. All right, so you're talking now about losing Pooley Arvey, Derek Ryan, Matthias Janmark, and Devin Shore. 
So out of your 13 forwards, even if you do re-sign Clean Costin and leave yourself with a million and a half dollars of salary cap space, you have to find room to obviously sign four players for a million and a half dollars. The minimum contract in the NHL is 750000 The best we can do is two. Two forwards leaves us with 11, 7, and 2. A roster size of 20. So, here is the problem for the Oilers. Without any salary cap trades, without anything really dynamic happening here, and obviously the inability to make those trades due to giving up assets at the trade deadline to make this year's team better, there is a world of hurt to be had for Ken Holland, the Edmonton Oilers, and the players on the team when it comes to negotiating this year's team into the playoffs and, of course, keeping in mindset next year's team and how you build a competitive winner. Simply put, if the Oilers do not want to win next year, this is not a problem. However, if the Oilers plan on contending year in, year out with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisettle, a $1 million salary cap will very well destroy those hopes. Folks, I'm Tyson. This is Dolany TV. It's a grim picture to paint, and obviously one that's not set in stone as of yet. But if it is indeed a $1 million salary cap increase, it is going to take a lot of ingenuity and a lot of maneuvering by Ken Holland and his staff to make a team that is competitive. You see what has happened due to the salary constraints this year and kind of the results that Oilers fans are none too pleased about so far. It is going to get much worse if that NHL salary cap does not increase as considerably as we once thought it would prior to yesterday. I'm Tyson, Dolany TV. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. If you haven't had a chance yet and you'd like to, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you can leave a like on the video if you haven't already, thank you so much. I am up on out of here.